also a fulfillment that comes from just having to learn so much. Yeah. You know, I hadn't, you know, things I had to, to learn to sort of get to this point is, you know, learn how to blog, learn, learn how to write a book, learn how to build a social media following, learn how to do a podcast and how to promote podcasts and so on. Kind of great to learn all this new stuff uh, an age where I have friends who are retiring and I'm sitting looking at them and going, well, what are you doing with yourself? Midlife is the best season of our lives, but often many of us lack fulfillment in some area of our midlife. It doesn't have to be that way. This podcast is a resource for midlifers to discover ways to find fulfillment in whatever area of life you need it. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Join me on the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast, a journey to make midlife the most fulfilling season of your life. Welcome to episode 52, my midlife friend. This is Bernie Borges, your host of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Hey, if you're new to the pod, welcome. This week's guest is Andy Paul, and this is a BF to AF episode. Let me tell you a little bit about Andy Paul. Andy is an accomplished author, speaker, advisor, and podcaster. On this episode, Andy shares a very personal story. Now, before you hear Andy's story, I want to caution you. The caution that I give you is to avoid judging Andy in any way. It's his story. It's not your story. Whether or not you relate to the circumstances in Andy's BFTF story, it's not about you having anything in common with Andy. I mean, you might, but whether or not you do, that's not the point. The point to Andy's BF to AF story is that it's up to each of us to be self-aware about the impact of our BF to AF stories so that we can find fulfillment and experience more joy and happiness in our life. In fact, as you hear Andy's story, listen to how fulfilled and joyful he is now. In fact, we spoke about how he is both happy and fulfilled. Now, on the other side of this conversation, I'll share a very personal story. Now, that's becoming a habit in case you haven't noticed by now. And I was reminded of this story during my conversation with Andy. I hope you'll listen to it because I think it'll give you reason to pause and ask yourself an important question. Before I bring in Andy Paul, I want to remind you that if you attend the Creator Economy Expo May 1st through the 3rd in Cleveland, Ohio, You're going to learn from over 40 creators whose business is based on content creation. You're going to network with about 500 people, many of whom are struggling with the same issues that you are. And you're going to hang out with me because I'm going to be there and I'd love to meet you. You know, whether you create a podcast or a video or a newsletter or a blog or books, whatever your content may be, if you're looking to become a content creator or up your content creator game, you'll want to attend CEX. Slide down to the show notes for this episode and find my affiliate link, tap or click on it to learn more about CEX and save $100 when you register using the code Midlife Fulfilled. I hope to see you there. And now here's my conversation with Andy Paul. I'll see you on the other side of my conversation with Andy with the personal story that I told you about. I hope you listen to it. I'll see you on the other side. Andy, welcome to the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Bernie, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here, Andy. I am looking forward to our conversation. Uh, You know that we always start with the age bracket question, Andy. Which age bracket bracket are you in? Yes. Uh, I guess you call it the 60 to 74 bracket. 60 to 74. Yes, indeed. That is my bracket as well. So I, uh, I, I have age pride, Andy. So I'm inviting you to join me in age pride. Oh, I believe me. I do. I do. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, where would you like to begin your BF to AF story? Oh, well, I said, let's go in chronological order. Start with the BF. Lots of things change for me. Uh, gosh, <laughs> it was about 12 years ago, 15 years ago. 
yeah, I'd been married for a long time and sort of a marriage that wasn't very successful, had two wonderful kids out of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just sort of, I won't say floundering, but wasn't, didn't have a lot of direction in terms of career. I'd started my own company and was, you know, doing well enough, but I don't know, wasn't really that exciting to me. Um, and then just happened, uh, <laughs> to sort of reconnect with someone from my past um, that I ultimately ended up marrying, and it uh, changed everything. How so? Well, you know, it's it's uh, there's a lot of value in having somebody to yeah be on the same team, you know, have the same share some of the same vision to be uh, supportive in ways that perhaps you know hadn't been there before. And yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've written several books. I, I've uh, you know, published to well over 1100 podcast episodes and basically did all that stuff, uh, you know, starting at age 58. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it was, it was just a dramatic sort of new chapter in my, in my career and in my life. Uh, because, you know, doing these things for, for business, but yeah, it's transformational in many ways. You get a chance to write a book and express yourself and, and put the work into it and then find their people who find value in what you produced, uh, and inspire you to do more of it. Uh, yeah, very unexpected at a very late stage in my career and, and in my life. So the success that you have had in recent years, as you mentioned, publishing books, uh, a bazillion or so podcast episodes, <laughs> which is how I came to know you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those were all in, um, in your current partner relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like, yeah, my first wife said, don't do these things, but mm -hmm. I mean, you're married. I mean, you, we were joking before, <laughs> before we started recording about, important it is to, to listen to your partner. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, that was, yeah, the, the support came from like, Hey, I always wanted to do this, you know, write a book. And it's like, well, what are you waiting for? And it's like, Oh, well, I guess nothing, I guess. Right. So, uh, just, yeah, that, that level of support throughout it and being part of the process. Cause certainly, uh, my wife has read everything that's been in progress and, and I provide valuable feedback to it. It's just, uh, yeah, I would not have anticipated it you know, 15 years ago that'd be, be doing that at this stage. And, and just also a fulfillment that comes from just having to learn so much. Yeah, you know, I hadn't, you know, things I had to, to learn to sort of get to this point is, you know, learn how to blog, learn, learn how to write a book, learn how to build a social media following, learn how to do a podcast and how to promote podcasts and so on kind of great to learn all this new stuff uh, an age where I have friends who are retiring and I'm suddenly looking at them and going, well, what are you doing with yourself? I always um, lovingly say to people when they uh, actually talk about retiring and say, you know, there's some science out there that shows that um, people who fully retire die on average three years after retiring. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've read the same statistics and, but I mean, it's for me, it's it's still feeling relevant, right? I mean, it's right. one of the things about putting yourself in a mode where you're, where you're creating, and I create a lot, is that, A, I learn a lot. Uh, I have to keep current with everything that's going on. But also, I think, combined a little bit with, with age and experience comes this idea that, you know, perhaps I see things more clearly than people that don't have that. And there's some of that value that I can provide and in my writing and my podcasts and so on to give people a, a new perspective that can help them. Andy, let me ask you if I may, and sure. if you don't want to go there, that's okay. Uh, but t talk to me about the emotion or emotions, if it's plural, that you experienced in this new season of life where your, your wife is very supportive and has I want to use the word enabled you, like enabled you to bring out the best in you is what I'm kind of hearing you say. What kind of emotions sure. have you experienced? Oh, happiness. Let's start with there. 
I mean, divorce is traumatic for even if it's well intended by both both parties and both parties you know support it, but it's traumatic for people going through it, traumatic for kids. Um, but yeah, from almost the moment that you know embarked on this path and I said reconnect with my wife and we got married is you know my kids are first among many to say yeah it's just evident how much happier you are and to be fair my ex-wife when she remarried had the same comment to her she was much happier and yeah being happy is is really important for productivity and for i've always been and remain very optimistic person i wake up every day and excited to the prospect of what i get to work on and what i get to do and yeah just having somebody to share it with is is really vital and it's a lesson i try to impart with to my kids who are still searching for their their partners in life is that yeah it's the adventure is much more fun when you're with somebody now one thing that i've talked about on this podcast many times on many episodes is the overlap between happiness and fulfillment, but also, Andy, the distinction between happiness and fulfillment. And I wonder if you can remark on that because what I'm hearing from you is the emotion of happiness in your your current marriage, but I'm also hearing whether or not you choose to use that the word fulfillment, I call it the F word, <laughs> that because of the work that you've been producing supported so greatly by your wife, that there's got to be great fulfillment there. So where's that distinction between happiness and fulfillment? Well, I think fulfillment for me is is the fact that I've been able to have an impact on a broad number of people, just people that read my books or listen to a podcast and and reach out and say, this has had a you know, this has had a measurable impact on me. This has changed the way I look at how I sell, the way I I live my business life, or you know, whatever dimension. And that is humbling and fulfilling, right? The knowing that you're able to, to have an impact on people. And that's, that's why you do it. I mean, not doing it just to, you know, as vanity projects to, to put a book out there is, you know, I think there's something valuable to share based on the experiences I've had over the decades of my career and, and the things I've experienced in my personal life that that could be of value to other people to maybe help shorten their learning curve or, or help them with a new perspective to, to work through a difficult situation in their career and in their life. Andy, you and I both know uh, Daniel Pink. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know that you, you, you know him well. He was on the Midlife of Phil podcast, episode 33. We discussed uh, his latest book, The Power of Regret. Mm-hmm. And uh, as the title implies, uh, regret is powerful when we think about it and study it and learn from it. And, uh, and are able to take some action on what we learn from it. And I'm wondering if you have any regrets, and I'm not referring to marriage, I'm referring to the fact that you were capable of doing all the things that you've been doing. Oh yeah. Before, yeah. right? Um, yeah. But, but, you know, we're, we're emotional creatures, right? And uh, an emotional, loving relationship sort of brought it all out. You know, like you said earlier, where she said, well, why not? Why why don't you write that book? But in terms of of regrets, have you thought about, again, I'm not referring to the first marriage. I'm referring to just your own capabilities. Have you ever thought about the fact that you were able to do this 20, 30 years ago? Yes. Yeah, I'm not much for dealing in regrets, but I do say, you know, having gone through the stage and I look at, at people who are 15, 20 years younger than I am and think, yeah, if there is a regret, I wish I had started this down this path earlier. But there was a reason for it, though, to some degree. So when I started my my company in the year 2000, it was really a deliberate move to sort of get off the <laughs> get off the fast track to some degree. And I'd spent the previous 15 years traveling extensively around the world because uh, most of the business I was doing, or a good chunk of the business I was doing, was international. And uh, I think it was like fall of 99, I missed a birthday, one of my kids' birthdays, and just said, not going to do that again. Mm-hmm. And they were just sort of reaching that age and where they're starting to involved in school sports and other things and, and uh, musical theater and the like. And I just said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change. And the way to do that was to 
start my own company where I had complete control over my time. And, and I was that dad for eight years that was at everything, every game, every theater performance, uh, anything they were doing, I was at. In fact, I was probably that dad that people took pity on thinking, doesn't he have a job or someplace to go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I did. And yeah, but I deliberately scaled my consulting work to accommodate what I wanted to accomplish in the personal side. So yeah, theoretically, I probably could have spent more time during those years, uh, yeah, starting up writing and so on. But yeah, I was happy doing just, just that for being there. And I get the sense that when you turn into that dad, where you were at every single one of your kids' events, that that was very fulfilling for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, maybe you've experienced this too, is, is, uh, you know, I just remember like the last game, lacrosse game my son played. He was a really excellent high school lacrosse player and played in college as well. And, and, but I remember his last, last game in, in college, it was like, it was for my ex-wife and I were both there. It was like, it was really sad for us because we, we were going to miss it way more than he did. Uh, right. Right. He was, he was done, but uh, it was such part of our lives. It was so much fun to go watch your kids do things. You know, my daughter was really involved in musical theater and same thing. It's like, you know, when you think, oh, this may be the last time it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, uh, one of my many experiences on this, this, this whole topic is, uh, I coached my son's little league baseball team, Mm -hmm. uh, when I had, when I owned my own business and it was one of those things where, you know, on the nights of practice, you know, I had to leave here about five and, uh, and of course, Saturdays you were there almost all day and, you know, had to organize and work with the parents and, and all that. And so there was a time commitment and an energy commitment. You know, you don't just show up, you have to really put a lot of energy into it. And I, and I know that I, it would have been harder for me to do that in in a corporate job, even though I saw other dads who had corporate jobs, but to your point, when you control your own hours, which has been a common theme on this podcast, Andy, Mm -hmm. we had a number of guests, you know, talk about, uh, the, the, the power and, and look, there's no disrespect for anybody that's in a corporate role. It's a choice, right? It's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was able to coach both my sons and daughters, you know, rec soccer teams for off and on for a number of years. And yeah, I was in the corporate world and yeah, wasn't there as much as I would have liked for a lot of that, but that was a lot of fun too. Um, you know, it's just, could never really understand parents that just wanted to sit on the sidelines or wouldn't even show up for games. <clears throat> there, excuse me. There's a son, a kid on my son's uh, high school lacrosse team. They were a very accomplished team. And, and there's one kid parents never show up for a single match. Mm. It's just like, how could you do that? Yeah. Right. I mean, your son's, he was a good player and he got, you know, played a lot and you know, and the he, team and ex- he saw all the other parents there. Well, and the parents, we all enjoyed each other for the most part too, right? So it was, as you've probably seen in, in you know, baseball and so on, it was a group of parents. There was sort of a core group that came pretty much to every mm-hmm. every game. Yeah. But it turned out to be a fairly good group. And we sort of became very friendly with a lot of them over the course of four years. And it was like, yeah, this poor kid. Parents just never showed up. And it's just like, yeah, how could you do that? Yeah. Andy, you and I are in the same age bracket. We uh, we discovered that at the beginning of, of this conversation. <laughs> yes. Um, I've got more gray hair though, so you do, you do, and I and I don't color my hair. However, uh, I am clean shaven for a reason. <laughs> uh, if I was to grow a beard, it would be white. <laughs> yeah, my my uh, my goatee has gotten pretty white too. So yeah, but I'm under orders not to shave it. So okay, uh, uh, understood, yeah. understood. Um. But where I want to go with this whole age bracket thing is, um, what, what are you thinking about your own future? What, you know, what's, what's next or, I don't want to say what's next. I don't mean that's different. Just, you know, what are you excited about over the next X number of years? Yeah. Well, <laughs> my kids keep saying, oh, why do you still want to work so hard? And I, I probably don't want to work so hard, but it's, I'm excited by, I don't know, I think I still have more to share. You know, there's more 
books I want to write. So I've written three you know, books on sales. I've got at least one more kind of mapped out that I want to write. I've got, uh, I'd love to write a novel. I've got starts of a bunch of those somewhere, which my wife, that's my wife's number one priority now is to get me to write a novel. <clears throat> well, yeah, first priority. Second priority, maybe the second priority. The first priority is I've actually have uh, a book of poetry that I've written that she wants me to publish. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got things I want to, things I want to do and, and, and uh, share and, uh, yeah, more podcasting. I think it's a great medium. I love, the, I love doing it just because for me, it's having done 1100 episodes and let's say roughly maybe 800 to 900 guests, distinct guests among those. Where else do you get an excuse to talk to so many interesting people, right? They have so mm-hmm. many different experiences and, and mm-hmm. I'm learning. Yeah, I'm still learning things that I'm applying in my own business every day from from these people. So I like that. But I mean, I'm you know, controlling my my hours and we'll do more of that because my wife's going to retire here pretty shortly and we'll travel a little bit more now that things are easing up. And so we'll see. But I mean, yeah, just I'm enjoying what we're doing and we just want to do more of it. So if I just follow on what you're saying, because everything you're saying rings true for me, and I will just add, because uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Andy, but mm. I will just add that uh, everything you said, as I said, rings true for me, and it's just fulfilling. You know, to your point, I, I thoroughly enjoy what you and I are doing right now, which is yeah. not just recording a podcast, but the fact that I get to interview you. Like you said, the fact that you get to have all these fascinating guests you know, and the excuse is, hey, let's record a podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I've only written one book. I've got uh, a couple in my head, um, but I've only written one book and I and I do aspire to write another one. So it's something I haven't yet committed to, but almost committed to. But again, it's it's the fulfillment, the enjoyment and the fulfillment that comes behind that, you know, because if we ask ourselves, do we have to do these things? I think the answer is probably no. no. No, no, but definitely don't want to. Yeah, want to. And it's, it's also, I don't know where this came from, this mindset came from, but <clears throat> excuse me, but yeah, you know, my dad had a very successful corporate career, worked for one company his entire career, rose to a very senior level, company being Oscar Mayer. And, but he retired at 62. I think my mom <laughs> was a driving factor in that. And, you know, I, I'm older than that now the age when he retired and I can't imagine not doing anything. Right. I mean, I, as I talked before, I mentioned friends that have retired, uh, some that have completely retired. I've, you know, maybe one of my better friends in life is mostly retired, but he still sits as a director and a couple boards of directors, you know, a couple of public companies. So still has a hand in the game, but yeah, I just can't, I can't imagine what that life would be. And maybe I just you know, need to grow up still and get to the point where I can envision that. But yeah, I really can't see a time where I'm just doing nothing. And not that it would be nothing, but I mean, just from a yeah. intellectual standpoint, a creative standpoint. So who knows, maybe yeah, be, you know, writing the next American novel or something, but it's, yeah, it's just, I, I don't really contemplate. It's never really even crossed my mind. There'd become a time where it's just like, yeah, I'm just completely done. Yeah. I think retirement has changed quite a bit for many people. Uh, I know speaking for myself and just many people that I know who have retired, some have retired because they were able to, meaning they had a very successful exit sure. and they're financially secure. They don't need to work. And, and so they, they've retired, but I, I don't think I can think of one person. And I, I know quite a few that have been able to retire because of the financial ability to retire. Sure. But in every situation, while they don't quote unquote work for a living, they're busy and yeah. and they're busy using their skills and talents yes. in a productive way. Yes. Yeah. I have a friend, actually a gentleman who husband of my ex-wife. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sits on several boards, uh, nonprofit boards. Yeah. Stays extremely busy, uh, stays fulfilled that way. You know, it's not aligned with what his work was. Yeah, and I can can see that as well uh, at some point. Uh, but I don't. Know, there's just so much exciting, I think, still going on. I think there's certainly the field that I'm in in sales. There's there's 
so much still that could change for the better. And I think this is, you know, sort of one of my missions in life is, is, you know, sort of the theme of the, the most recent book is how do you help enable people to become the best version of themselves in the role they want to play? That's, you know, I see sort of my mission for sellers is help them feel the confidence that they can take the steps they need to become that best version of themselves. And it requires sort of operating a little bit, coloring outside the lines a little bit from time to time and uh, taking control of, of your own destiny that in a way that, you know, may roil some people up sometimes the wrong way, but it's your life, your career, take responsibility for it. And I think there's more people do that than we'll see in this field, which I've spent my entire career in, is, is see more people leading careers of fulfillment in a very difficult profession. And that's you know, hopefully can help people do that. Yeah. Well, maybe that was it right there, but I was going to ask you uh, a, cl- a closing thought, Andy, for this conversation. Give us your closing thought. I think for, for a lot of people, I just hopefully they can sort of see me a little bit as a role model for yeah, you may be in the later stages of your career, but you've had all these great experiences or maybe there's something new you want to try. Yeah, I've looked at my career as sort of a series of chapters and I've, I think I counted like eight or nine distinct chapters in my career, the latest of which is, you know, author, podcaster, thought leader. Yeah, never never say no to something just because you think you're too old or, or you think your voice isn't valid. Everybody's opinion is valid. Yeah, everybody can make a contribution. We don't know until we hear what people have to say. And if you have something to say and share, say it, share it. Uh, and it's never too late. That's great. Well, we have people uh, listening to this podcast that are really spanning a wide age range. So I think you're speaking to a lot of people that are not only in our age bracket, but mm. even younger. So thank you for sharing your thoughts, your feelings, your aspirations, inspirations, Uh, with us here today, Andy, on this episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Bernie, thank you for having me. My conversation with Andy reminds me of a time where I missed one of my son's soccer games. I was in the habit of attending all of my son Derek's soccer games. In his early childhood years, I even coached his Little League baseball team, and I also coached his soccer team. But in his high school years, he played club soccer at a much higher level, and he had a real coach. In fact, he had two coaches, both of which were experienced soccer players and great coaches. My wife and I attended all of Derek's games as, you know, the usual parent spectators. Soccer was very important to Derek, and it was important to us to support him, and we did by attending each game. As Andy shared in his story about how he and his wife became friends with the other kids' parents at events, we had the same experience. The kids' parents saw each other all the time at the games, and we became friends with most of them. The kids had victories and defeats, and all the parents shared the experience together. I admit it was like a club. We enjoyed it nearly as much as the kids. And the kids on this team were like a brotherhood. Their bond was tight. At the time, I had my own business. I used to joke that when you own your own business, you get the privilege of choosing the hours that you want to work. Yep, you can work any 16 hours out of a 24-hour day that you want. Bad jokes aside, I remember one of many tournaments that Derek's team played in. Tournaments were intensely competitive, and for some reason, Tournaments were always not local to us. They were usually two to four, sometimes five or six hours driving distance away. In this particular tournament, Derek's team did well. They kept winning and advancing deeper in the tournament. Well, on the final weekend of the tournament, Derek's team advanced to the final, the championship game. The kids were very excited to make it to their first ever championship game in a tournament since they'd been playing together and the coaches were also stoked. They won the semifinal on the Saturday, and the championship game was the next day, Sunday, at 3 p.m., three hours away. And I chose not to go to this game. 
Why? I had work to do. I had to prepare something for the next day, that following Monday. Honestly, I don't even remember what I had to prepare. I had, Literally, I have no recollection whatsoever what was so important that I couldn't give up a Sunday to attend my son's first ever tournament championship game. The way that I rationalized it in my head was that I wouldn't be getting home until late in the evening because the game was three hours away and it was a 3 p.m. start time. Well, you probably see where this is going. My son's team won the game. They won the championship game. Needless to say, they were thrilled. It was a huge accomplishment for them. And I missed it. But it's worse than that. You see, my son Derek, he kicked the winning goal in overtime. And I missed it. Well, after the kids and the parents celebrated their victory at the end of the game, they gave the championship trophy to Derek because he scored the winning goal. Can you imagine my reaction when Derek and my wife got home later that night? Derek walked in carrying this humongous trophy and he told me the whole story. I felt horrible. There was nothing that I could do to undo the fact that I missed this game, this event in Derek's life that he would undoubtedly always remember. Thankfully, neither Derek nor my wife rubbed it in my face, even though I deserved it. I think they both knew how much I regretted missing this experience. I mean, I didn't hide my regret. The truth is, it hurt. I share this personal story with you because just as Andy shared his personal story, which included a transformational moment for him when he missed one of his kids' birthdays, the story that I just shared with you was also transformational for me. You see, from that time forward, I didn't allow anything to get in the way of attending either my son or my daughter's activities. Nothing. You may remember that I asked you in the introduction of this episode not to judge Andy Paul or compare his situation to your life. Instead, I ask you to think about some transformational moment or moments in your life. And don't judge yourself. Now that's not easy. I sure judged myself in that moment when I missed Derek's championship game. But whatever it is that you experienced that gave you reason to pause and, and then eventually commit or recommit to changing something in your life that brings you fulfillment, whatever that thing is, embrace it. Embrace the lesson that you learned from it. You know, I'm a person of faith. And I believe what the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Anytime I can't understand why I did or didn't do something that I regret, I think of this Bible verse just to move me forward with the lesson that I learned. I truly believe that we all have a story or two about lessons that we learned that gave us a reason to commit or recommit to an important value. This episode is Andy Paul's story, followed by my story of missing my son's championship hero moment and the impact that that had on my life and the commitment or recommitment that I made in my life. I invite you to share your story of fulfillment transformation. Now, that might be a very personal story that you wouldn't want to share in public. I get it. Start, at the very least, by being self-aware about it. Don't deny it. Think hard about how it changed you. Now, if you are open to sharing it in public, I mean, I just shared mine, I invite you to share it on the Midlife Fulfilled podcast LinkedIn page, which is linked up in the show notes here. I'll post this episode on the Midlife Fulfilled LinkedIn page, like I do every episode, And you can share your story there as a comment, if you're willing. Share what you learned from that experience. And I really want to thank Andy Paul for sharing his personal BF to AF story on this episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. And if you want to learn more about Andy, his social media and website links 
are linked up in the show notes page right below or to the right, depending on which pod, podcast player you're listening on. Hey, are you going to the Creator Economy Expo? I told you all about it in the introduction. Meet me and 500 other content creators at CEX 2023, taking place May 1st through the 3rd in Cleveland, Ohio, USA. CEX is the event for education and networking if you create content and want to build or grow your business based on content. Visit my affiliate link in the show notes page to learn more about CEX and save $100 when you register using the code Midlife Fulfilled. Next week's guest is Miri Rodriguez. Miri's story is a different kind of a BF to AF story. Miri battled cancer due to genetics in her family. Her story is one of bravery, faith, pride, and encouragement. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Midlife Fulfill podcast so that you're automatically notified when episode 53 is available. This is Bernie Borges, your host of the Midlife Fulfill podcast. If you're still with me, I am honored. Remember, if you're 80% fulfilled, you're doing great. I'll see you on episode 53.